Good morning. We welcome all of you today in the name of our Lord. A special welcome to any guests we have with us this morning. Also, those who are joining us on the live streaming this morning. Uh, let's see. First of all, I want to thank members of the operations team who trimmed the bushes and fertilized and got the, uh, the space outside looking really great. And hopefully, pretty soon, we'll even have some blooming going on. So we're grateful. Could you tune me down just a little bit? Thank you. Uh, so next week, important weekend, uh, the second, we have a congregational meeting at noon and uh, we'll be voting on moving forward with the portico and the funding thereof. So you want to be here for that. And then the ninth is a huge day, uh, Pentecost Sunday to start with. We recognize our graduates. Uh, it'll also be our last transition team meeting where we'll talk about and get your input for characteristics and qualities of the new senior pastor. So in fact, we felt this was so important that the transition team even added an extra date to the Saturday night, uh, Sunday noon and Monday morning to Wednesday evening at 6.30. So signups can be happening at the Welcome Center also online. Uh, so please let us know that you're coming. And uh, if you haven't participated before, this is probably the one you want to be at. So uh, we invite you to, to be there. Our order of worship is printed for you and is also on the screens. Uh, we invite you to stand for the call to worship. Please face the cross. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He's is risen indeed. Hallelujah. God is alive. Hope is alive. A new age. Joy is alive. Love is alive. We are alive. The church is alive. God of life, we worship you. God of creation, we praise you. God of revelation, we learn from you. God of resurrection, we come to celebrate you. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord be with you always. And also with you.
Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Bountiful God, you gather your people into your realm, and you promise us food from your tree of life. Nourish us with your word, that empowered by your spirit, we may love one another and the world that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I don't know. Does Addie want to come up? Any other youngsters? I think it's Addie today. Stay over there, though. We're going we're gonna to stay over that way this morning. You want to come up? We're going to talk about our plants. We haven't visited them for a while. How you doing? Good to have you here. So we planted these a while ago, back uh, just after uh, Ash Wednesday, I think. So we've been waiting for these plants and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And they did grow up. There was one we weren't sure about, and it's coming along pretty nice. What do you think? It's doing okay. And then we've got this one that had the healing because it's got the pencil on there. And uh, that looks, looks pretty good, too. Um, this one's all right, too. This one's really big and tall. So I'm happy about that one, but this is the one I'm really interested in at this point. At the very top of this one, if you get a chance, come and examine this. At the very top, what do you see there? You see those big giant pods at the top? Those are going to be the blossom that comes out eventually, but we're waiting to see when they come out. So we have to wait, and we have to be patient, and we have to have a little bit of faith, just a little bit of faith that uh, something incredible is going to happen. I think this might happen with these guys too, but they're nowhere near where this one is. This one's all set to go. And it's really interesting because these were the ones that were supposed to grow the fastest, and these two were supposed to grow the slowest, and this one's grown bigger than the others and looks like it's just about ready. So we're going to have to wait and see what happens. I'm, I was hoping that way before already we would have had a blossom, but it's not to be yet because sometimes... We think about, we pray about, and we want something to happen in a certain way. And sometimes it happens really fast, and we're like, oh, that's great. That's like an answer to prayer. And other times, we have to wait for a little while and understand that God's time is not our time, right? And so we wait to see where it is that God's taking us on what kind of journey. And that's what's happening here. We're waiting to see what happens. I'm pretty sure I know what might happen, but I'm still waiting. So let's have a prayer before we go. Dear Lord, Lord thank you thank for today. Lord, Lord, help us learn, help us learn to, wait. to wait. Sometimes, Sometimes we, want we want things to happen fast. To happen fast. But Lord, Lord, it's in your time, in your time. that things will happen. In Jesus, name, In Jesus' name, we pray, we pray and play, play and, wait. and wait. Amen. Amen. All right. A reading from Acts. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. 
a certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thea and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and his, her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from Revelation. And in the spirit, one of the angels carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out from heaven. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its, gate will, its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, for only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb through the middle of the streets of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father because the Father is greater than I. And now I've told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the most challenging and awesome responsibilities that a pastor has is to walk with people to the day of their death. It's the day when we get ready to commend them to the Lord through the words of commendation of the dying. And oftentimes when that's completed and the family is often gathered, one of the comments that is made is, now they're at peace. Now they're at peace. It's something that all of us, I think, wish for as people of God, as believers in the resurrection of Jesus, that we will have peace at the last. Now, we know that some people don't get to have that kind of peaceful death. This weekend, we remember all those who, in most cases, died violently on behalf of this country. They died deaths of valor as they gave their lives to defend us and our freedoms against tyranny. But yet, as we commemorate them and remember them this weekend, we also pray that they now also rest in peace. Jesus, in this text today, is at peace. Even as, as he faces his ultimate death on the cross, he himself is at peace. He is headed toward the mission to which he has been called to offer his life for the sake of the world, for all people of all time. And even though he himself is at peace, he now knows that his disciples are not. They are full of anxiety and wonderment and concern and what's next and what's going to happen to them. And so even as Jesus himself is at peace, he offers this peace to his disciples. 
that they are to be at peace in their calling. Now, he offers peace, not like the peace that the world gives. Can the world really give peace? I mean, look around the world today and we discover there are few places that are at peace. We have civil wars, we have insurrections, we have death by terrorist attack. We still have people in our military giving their lives in places like Syria and Afghanistan and Iraq. We have, we have discord at home over issues like health care and immigration and climate change. We, ha we can't seem to even get on the same page in regard to fixing our own roads and bridges and infrastructure. No, it seems as if the world cannot give any peace. So how is it that Jesus is able to give peace? a peace which needs to come into our lives, a peace which needs to settle upon us, a peace that needs to give us a sense of, of well-being and assurance, a peace that reminds us that it's ultimately God who is in charge. No, the world cannot give the peace that goes beyond our understanding, but God does in Jesus Christ. And as we go close, grow closer to the celebration of Pentecost, the giving of the Holy Spirit and the creation of Christ's church, we are given the one who recalls for us that God indeed gives us peace. A peace that passes all our human understanding. A peace that comes into the midst of our brokenness and our desire to feel at rest. And that's not the kind of peace it is. It's not the kind of peace that absents us from all difficulties and challenges and disruptions and conflicts. But it's the kind of peace that helps us stand firmly in the midst of those things, trusting that all of these things ultimately and the outcome of them is ultimately in the hands of God through Christ. This is the kind of peace that Jesus offers not the kind of Jesus, not the kind of peace that that removes us, but the kind of peace that assures us that God is a charge, and that as God's people, we have peace. Now, how do we grow in an understanding and reception of that peace? How is it that we also have the opportunity? to share that peace with our world. Obviously, we have a sign out there that says peace in every language, a peace that every person, a peace that every community, a peace that every family longs for and desires. And as we work through the process of vision and mission and core values, we discovered that the way we grow into appreciation of that peace and the way we're able to pass it on is by living in faith and in service to Christ. We grow spiritually. We share generously, we 
love unconditionally, and we inspire hope. We grow spiritually as we gather around God's word and sacrament to be reassured that Christ is in the midst of whatever crisis we experience. We share and give generously to make sure that this word of God and this good news of Jesus Christ is shared in the world and in our community through our community of faith. We love unconditionally. So all those people we say peace be with you to at the parking lot are also welcome and invited to be part of our community of faith. And in all of that, and through all of that, we inspire hope. When we are the church, the people of God, fulfilling that mission, we are recalling for everyone this peace that passes all understanding, and it gets reaffirmed for us as well. As we gather at the bedside of, of loved ones and as we commend them to the Lord's eternal home, we often do so with the words, it's okay, good and faithful servant, you can let go. You can let go and put everything into God's hand. And so that's a good thing for us to remember, not only at death, but in everyday life. That we do what we can, we do what we're responsible to do, but in the end, we too put everything in the Lord's hands. And by putting everything in the Lord's hands, we experience the peace which passes all understanding, a peace which the world cannot give. Amen. Gathered as sisters and brothers in Christ, let us affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting God's promise of new life, we pray for the renewal of the church, the world, and all of creation. Prevail upon us with your spirit. Convince us daily that you have called us to proclaim the good news of your grace. Let all who love you proclaim your word of life. God of life, feed us with the bounty of your creation. Bless the earth with enough rain and sunshine for the flourishing of orchards, gardens, and fields. Give us thankful hearts as we share the fruit of the land with all who hunger. God of life, hear our prayer. The leaves of your tree of life are for the healing of the nations. Bring an end to civil war, genocide, terrorism, and violence. Overcome divisions of race, politics, and religion. Mend relationships across borders and across oceans with China, Iran, Iraq, Israel, Palestine, and Afghanistan. God of life, our hearts are troubled and afraid. Visit us again with your peace. Comfort those facing uncertain futures, those who are unemployed or underemployed, those in difficult relationships, those with chronic pain, those waiting for news about their health, and those who are sick. Gary, Daddy, Trish, Betty, Jim, Richard, Ruth, Marlon, Karen, Alec, Paul, Paul, and friends and family of our Savior's Lutheran Church, Bob, Caitlin, Kinley, Jennifer, Willa, Bester Jane, Kim, Gil, Sandra, God of life, we give you thanks to all who have died in service to our nation. Inspire us to walk in your light and to live for the sake of freedom and justice for your children. God of life, open the gates of salvation to all who are written in your book of life. Dr. Harold Kruger, lead us into the city that needs no light of sun or moon, where you will be our light forever. God of life, hear our We commend these and all our prayers to you, O God. Come near us with your saving help for the sake of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's take a moment to share that peace.
Let us pray. Risen one, as you broke bread with the disciples on the shore, meet us now in this meal. Nourish us to follow you, using our gifts to feed the hungry and tend the weary. And all for your love's sake. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. His It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. We give you thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word, inseparable from you, through whom you created all things and in whom you take delight. He is your word, sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and our lot and was shown forth as your Son, born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. He is our Lord Jesus, fulfilled all your will and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust you. He is the one who handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection, taking bread and giving thanks to you, said, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and cup, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. Send your spirit upon these gifts of your church. Gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in trust and truth that we may praise and glorify you, your son, Jesus Christ through whom all glory and honor are yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one, we pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The table is set, and all are welcome. Please be seated.
Let us pray. Living God, you have created us in our brokenness and nourished us with the body of Christ broken for us. Risen to new life with you, send us now to bear your healing love into the wounded world. In the name of our risen Savior and Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The blessing of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit surround and sustain you, keep you from harm, and fill you with courage. Amen. Amen. the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.